I saw a video and it completely like it broke me down and um I'll put the video right here. Why are you breaking this like this? Now, oh, why are you doing this? Oh, for real? Can you please leave me alone? Why am I breaking this? Can you like please this? let me close the door? Can you stop? For real, Rosie? Why are you doing this? I've asked real, you numerous Rosie? times to stop. Because you feel for your safety, right? Because I want you to stop. Now you're setting me up, right? No. This was my day-to-day -day life with my ex. Like, this was the norm. This was the norm. And if you listen to her tone, she's used to that. Like, she's so used to that behavior. And it completely broke me. Just even know that somebody else is actually going through something like that. It's so devastating to, to be in a situation like that and fighting that fight um, by yourself. It's just... It's not okay, you guys. Like, it's not okay. So I found an apartment. And I didn't tell him that I had found an apartment until maybe like a couple weeks before it was actually time for me to move because I needed to start packing my stuff. Because I knew that if I would have told him like right when I found the apartment, he would have spazzed out. And I just was, I was too afraid to like find out like what his reaction would have actually been if I would have told him like months ahead of time like I'm leaving type thing you know I was done by this time in my mind we were broken up um he was sleeping on the couch for like the last maybe like six months of the relationship I was just I was done I, I couldn't bear to share a bed with him I, I just couldn't I just I was so disgusted with him as a person like I hated him and that's such a very strong word but I legit had like angry hate for him and so i told him that um i was done i was like you know i found a place and i'm leaving and you can have the apartment i had already um like a couple like when i told him that i was leaving i told him i'm like you know um i'm going to sign the apartment over to you and you can have the apartment. You don't have to leave. I'll leave. You can stay here. So um, I signed the apartment over to him like a couple of weeks before I actually left. And then so what started happening then was it's like every time we got an apartment, well, every time we got in an argument, he was like, well, you can get the F out. You can get the F out, B, because you don't, this is my apartment. This is my, and it, like, that was another reason why I didn't want to sign the apartment over like too far in advance. And I ended up signing it over like maybe like two, three weeks before I actually had to go. And so I was like, you know what, fine, I'll leave. I'll go and I'll stay with my parents until it's time for me to go. And he's like, no, don't leave. And he's like crying and stuff like that. And I'm like, why do you keep doing this? I'm like, so what do you want from me? I'm like, I'm going to be gone in a couple of weeks. Like, just stop doing this. So my mom would come over to the house and try to like diffuse things and stuff like that because he would call her crying he would write letters to her crying and things like that so um when it was time for me to go he would be like okay like he was like okay well you know by this time we weren't really arguing and things like that like he was trying to be cordial with me and he's like you know well I'm not gonna make you stay in a relationship I know you don't love me anymore and um that's fine so you can you know i'll i'll help you move like if you want to move like i'll help you move and i'm like okay cool like you can legit like you can help me move so um he helped me move into my apartment and i lived maybe about 15 minutes from him by this time i had a car he didn't have a car still um he had a car at the beginning of the relationship but his car broke down it just never got fixed and blah 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 so um that was that um, once he helped me move into my apartment, like everything was cool with us. Um, I'm the type of person where it's like, you know, if you're going to be, if you're going to act like you have some sense, like I'll be your friend. If we break up and you still want to chit chat, so I'll be your friend. I don't have a problem with that. I'm not one of those people that's like, you know, we're not together anymore. I hate you. You disgust me. Don't ever talk to me again. Like, no, even though I had all of those negative feelings for him, once me and him broke up, I felt better. Like I legit felt like I was free. So, um, I moved into my apartment. Everything was cool. We were talking like every now and then just on the phone. I wasn't going over to the apartment or anything like that. It was just very infrequent how often we talked. 
And so, um, after a little while, maybe like been in the apartment for maybe like a month or two, I started noticing like little things going on with my car. So like, it would be like shaving cream or something like with my door handle. And I'm like, oh my God, like, why is it shaving? Like these kids are super tripping. Like what is wrong with these kids in this neighborhood? So I'm like, wipe it off and I will go to work. So, um, one day I came out and my tire was slashed and I was like, oh my God, like somebody slashed my tire. Like how did my tire get slashed? So, um, that just so happened to be the day that he called me out the blue. Like we haven't talked for maybe like a week and a half or something like that, which I was cool with. And so I'm on the phone with him. I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm like, I had to call out work today because I had to get my tire fixed. Somebody came and slashed my tire. I'm like, I don't know if they thought my car was somebody else's car, but this is not that. I can't be having my tire slashed. He's like, oh my God, you know, that's so crazy that your tire got slashed. He's like, well, you know, um, I know that you're paying all the bills over there now. So, you know, if you wanted me to get your tire fixed, I'll get, I could get your tire fixed for you. And I'm like, okay, but I'm not trying to be on nothing. He's like, no, you know, just as a friend, because I know like you're paying all the bills. I'm like, okay, cool. So boom, got my tire fixed. So I'm like, all right, cool. So um, after that, um, everything was cool still. And then like we had a conversation like a couple weeks later and he was like, you know, um, I'm really trying to, you know, be your friend, but I still, you know, I still want to be with you. And I'm like, you know, no, I don't think that would be a good idea. You know, if you don't, if you feel like we shouldn't talk anymore, like we don't have to talk anymore, but I don't, I just don't think that that would be a good thing for us to um, get back together. Like, I don't want to get back together with you. And so he cursed me out on the phone and I hung up the phone and then I thought that was it. So this is the summertime by now. I have me a little, you know, I have me a little summertime boo. And so, um, I was, we were leaving out cause you know, he would come in the house and spend nights and stuff, of course. And so we were leaving out about to go somewhere. I don't know where we're about to go. And so I get a phone call and it was my ex. And so I pick up the phone. I'm like, hello. I'm like, Last time I talked to you, like, you were cursing me out. So, I'm not even understanding, like, why you called me right now. And he was like, mind you guys, he did not have a car. He's like, so, he's like, yeah, I see you like um, tall guys now. Because he's like a little shorty. He's like, I see you like tall guys now. I'm like, huh? He's like, yeah, I see you like tall guys with braids that wear, like, colored shirts. Uh, it was something like he basically described his outfit. So, I'm outside by the car next to my guy. And I'm on the phone. And I'm like... Like, are you watching me type thing? So I'm like, dude, you're tripping. And so I hung up the phone. So um, fast forward <clears throat> to um, like other times where I would be with my guy and he would call me and he would describe what I had on or if I was leaving out for work, <clears throat> he would call my phone and be like, um, he would leave a message on my voicemail like, yeah, you know, like you left out for work. Um late today you must have been um out you must have been up with your guy all night and i'm like are you stalking me so legit this dude was taking a bus <clears throat> sorry you guys this dude was legit taking a bus over to my house to stalk me i don't know if he was sitting in the bushes i just like to say he was hiding in the bushes because i was never able to see him i know he didn't have a car and um that happened for like a long time like he was doing that like on and off for like a long time so um i remember one night um my guy i was with my guy and then my friend like because i was like i have friends again my best friend um at the time she came over and you know she had her little friend or whatever so we were just like chilling in the house or whatever so i guess he came by the house and her like commotion in the house or whatever um people being happy and when it was time for like when we were all like okay you guys like we're about to go i come outside and my tire is slashed like not like a little slash like you could legit you could legit put your hand you could put your fist through the tire like and i have big hands like if you could put your fist through the tire like that's how slash the tire was like you he legit like ripped it open and so i'm outside and i'm like oh my god i'm like my tire is slashing and by this time i'm like it's him like i already know you're stalking me um my guy already knew like the stuff that he was doing and stuff like that so i'm like you know i have a jack in the car i have a donut so we can go ahead and just change it so the guys are like trying to jack the car up and stuff like that and then i get a phone call 
So it's like a weird number. So I pick up the phone. I'm like, hello. And so on the other end, I hear his voice because, of course, I know his voice. And he's like, yeah, I see you guys are having a hard time fixing that tire. And I'm like, he's at, mind you guys, it was like 11 o'clock at night, like 10, 11 o'clock at night. And so my guy like spazzes out, like screaming and hollering. He's like, what kind of dummy, like what kind of dude is this that were actually like you sitting and watching us? change a flat tire that you flat like what's wrong with like this dude is crazy like but he won't come out though he's he's not he ain't crazy enough to come out though so um we get the tire fixed and everything like that and i like go about my business and then like um a couple days later i get another like random phone and when i pick up the phone i'm like hello and he's like um uh, hey, how you doing? I'm like, first of all, like, why are you calling me from random numbers? And second of all, like, why would you slash my tire? Like, why would you do that? Like, so did you do it the first time? I didn't slash your tire. I'm like, you did slash my tire. I'm like, you will never have to admit it, but I know that you slashed your tire. He's like, I didn't slash your tire, but you know, if you, um, but I'll fix the tire for you. Like, I'll get you another tire because, um, I know that you're, you know, paying all the bills or whatever. And I'm like, dude, whatever my thing was. Yeah. You need to get another tire because you flattened my tire. So he got the tire fixed. Mind you, this is the second time he slashed my tire. Second time he got the tire fixed. So um, I'm like, you know what? Like, legit, no. You need to, like, go away. Like, you really need to just, like, leave me alone. Like, I'm super duper done with you. Like, done. So um, I didn't have work the next day. So he comes over to the house the next day. And he's literally, like, leaning on the bell. And so I come to the window because I was on the first floor. This is like a legit three flat. So I was on the first floor, very low, you know, it's a first floor apartment. Um, not a basement, but a first floor. So um, I'm like, I lift up the window and I'm like, what are you doing? Like, he's like, let me in the house. I'm like, I'm not going to let you in the house. Like, I'm not talking to you anymore. Like, I'm done. Like, stop calling my phone. Stop coming over to my house and stalking me. Like, you are creeping me out, dude. Like, no, stop it. So I'm trying to put the window down, close the window down. He puts his hands on the ledge and he pulls himself up and he literally like forces open the um the screen and the um he pops the screen off and he forces the window up. So by this time, he's like halfway in my apartment. Like the upper part of his body is in my apartment. I'm like, are you serious right now? You're legit breaking into the apartment. Like two seconds later, he's in the apartment. So he's like why you don't want to be with me you just want to sit up here and be with this guy and he's not gonna do you i'm like i know he's not gonna do me like you do me and that's part of the reason why i would rather be with him than you and so um i'm like you know what i'm calling the cops because you're like freaking me out right now and i tell you one thing for sure two things for certain if i get to the point where i need to call the cops on you or i feel like i want to call the cops on you you have really taken yourself to a whole nother level because that is something I don't do. That's not even something that I've ever even had to do. So I'm like, I'm calling the cops because you're you're tripping right now. Like, I'm legit. Like, I'm in my head. I'm like, I don't know what this man is capable of at this point. You just broke into my apartment. So I'm here ready to call the cops. He snatches the phone out of my hand. And he goes in the bathroom. So he goes to my bathroom. I'm like, get out of my apartment. So he calls my best friend that I was just friends with since sixth grade and still friends with to this day. And he's like, um, I know you effing her and blah. And the dude is like, my best friend is like, um, what? I know when we was together, you was having sex. He's like, dude, I never like, what are you talking? He's like, dude, you're super crazy. Like, are you legit calling my phone? Trying to accuse me of sleeping with her when y'all was in a relationship? He's like, are you dumb? Like, do you really truly think? That if I was sleeping with her when you guys were together, that you would have been sleeping with her? Like, you, what, what type of dude you think I am? You think I was going to tolerate that? Like, you you think I was going to just slide on into the side piece? Or like, what, like, what's wrong with you? Like, if I was sleeping with her, she would not have ever been sleeping with you. Y'all wouldn't have been together. So I'm like, give me my phone, give me my phone. So my best friend hangs up the phone or whatever, and my ex legit, like, slams my phone on the bathroom floor and breaks my phone. So um, I'm like, you know what? I'm out of here. So I leave the apartment because at this point, I finally get some sense. I'm like, girl, you need to get out of that apartment because now you don't have nobody to call. You don't have nothing. So I 
I had like a nightgown on. I left out the apartment in my nightgown with my keys and my purse and I got in my car and I drove off. I asked my parents what happened. And they was like, oh my God, like, are you serious? I'm like, yes, like this dude is crazy. Like I'm done with him. I don't want to be with, like, I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to be friends with him. Like I'm done with him. So my mom's like, well, you know, um, I talked to him and he told me that he wanted to sit down with me for at breakfast and he wanted to talk to me about like everything that's been going on with you guys. And I'm like, we're not even together. Like, so what is, what is there to talk about? So, um, she goes to breakfast with him or whatever. And so, um, they're at breakfast. And so she calls my phone and she's basically like, kind of like basically like telling me like, you know, yeah, he's saying this. He's saying that, you know, he really wasn't trying to scare you. He really, I'm like, no, I'm not interested in any of that. So, um, they get back to, um, his apartment and she told me that she basically told him like, listen, she doesn't want to be with you anymore. Like, you really need to just, you need to just let her go. Like, I know you love my daughter. I know you want to be with my daughter, but you have to just let it go. Because at this point, things are just completely out of hand. And then she says that he legit passed out on the concrete. Like, fell backwards and like, just whole body just passed out. So she calls my phone hysterical. I'm over my best friend's house. Um, and we're chilling. And so, um, she calls my phone and she's like, um, he passed out. Like, I'm like, who passed out? She's like, he passed out. He passed out on the ground. I told him that you don't want to be with him anymore. And he just passed out. He just fell out. He just passed out. And I'm like, he just passed out. She's like, yeah. And I'm like, okay, like, what are you calling me for? And so, um, I got off the phone with her and she said that, when he came to, like she called 911, the ambulance came and she said that when he came to, he was just, he kept saying like, why she don't want me no more? Like, why she don't want to be with me no more? Why she don't want me no more? And so, um, my mom called me and she was like, you know, I, we're at the hospital. Like we're at the hospital. I'm at the hospital with him right now. And you need to come up here. I'm like, why do I need to come up here? I'm like, is he dead? She's like, oh my God, Candace. Like, no, he's not dead. I'm like, okay, so what do I need? To, like, I didn't care. I'm like, so what? So what good, good. He's at the hospital. He could just sit and stay at the hospital. So, um, um, she's like, you know, you need to come up here and sit with him because this is like, he fell out because you don't want to be with him. And I'm like, I don't care. So she convinced me to come up to the hospital. She made it seem like he was in the hospital and maybe he was not, he was sitting in the waiting room with the rest of the people. So I get there and I'm sitting there. I got a whole attitude because I didn't want to be there. And so she left on some, okay, well, now that you're here, I can leave type stuff. So she left and um, I was sitting there with a whole attitude and he looked at me and he said, um, can you do me a favor? I was like, what? He said, can you please leave? I said, of course, because I didn't want to come here in the first place. I, I was already pissed that I even had to come there. And so I left and that was um, like the end end. like once he got to that point um, where I guess he kind of really understood like she doesn't like she just don't want to be with me anymore. Like I legit just passed out and she just doesn't want to be with me anymore. Even though my mom told me like in the end that the ambulance was like um, my mom was like, you know, where um, him, and my, him and my daughter just broke up. And he's like, you know, sometimes guys do this for, you know, sympathy. We've seen this before type stuff. And she's like, whatever. But um, so that was it. And that was like three years, like three torturous years of being with somebody who was just so verbally abusive and like every way shape and form it just completely broke me and it turned me into like a really like harsh person towards men even to this day um because I it's hard for me to trust them it's um it's hard for me to believe them it's hard for me to see them for like maybe who they really are because I always kind of feel like if he was able to flip like that then any man is capable of flipping like that. Um, and that's just something that really, really just broke me. Um, if I could give advice to like the old me or the younger me rather, 
I would have left as soon as he started locking the doors. And like for anybody who's watching this that could unfortunately relate to any of this, like when you see the first signs, like get out. It's not going to get any better. Don't fall for the tears. Don't fall for the I'm sorry. Don't fall for the gifts. Don't fall for any of that because it's only going to get worse. He literally just primed me to become a person that was so used to his behavior that I felt stuck in a situation that I really wasn't stuck in. It was just, I felt stuck because he wouldn't go away. And it's just, I don't want anybody to ever go through anything like that. Physical abuse is bad. Verbal abuse is bad. Any type of abuse is bad. And it leaves emotional scars that never go away. They never, ever go away. You'll, there'll never be a time where I'll be with somebody and I won't think that they can't turn into this person. There'll never be a time where I'll be with somebody and I'll feel like safe with them because he he broke me. And what was even more hurtful is I would come to my parents about this and they didn't believe me. Like they just, they did not believe me. It was dreadful and it really shaped me um, as a person. That's my story time, you guys. Um, if this unfortunately hit home for anybody, I'm so sorry that you had to deal with any of this. Um, it's not your fault. It was never your fault. It never would be your fault. It never could be your fault. Um, and that's it, you guys. So as always, that's going to be it for me. Candace the Aries. And always remember to enjoy the journey. Dip, dip, dip.